Hello, I'm Lloyd, s force physicist, and in this video I'm going to be taking you through the salt and ice experiment from your science delivery box. So before we start, a question for you. Do you ever notice every winter trucks laying salt and grit on the icy roads? You might not have because they go out quite early in the morning, but if you've ever wondered why, hopefully by the end of this video you realise exactly why we need that salt on our icy roads. So for this experiment, you are going to need a few things that we've provided in your delivery box. First of all, you will need a glass thermometer like this. It'll be in a plastic box. You're going to need some ice and you will need to set that in your ice cube tray that we've given you. So if you're doing this experiment uh, in the morning, set off your water to freeze overnight. You're also going to need some salt. Uh, I've got a bit more than I need here, but you'll probably need four or five teaspoons worth of salt. You'll need a cup or a beaker or a bowl in order to mix these things together. I've gone for a tall beaker here. And you'll also need just a little bit of water. So I'm going to pour only about that much in. So just, just enough to cover the bottom. And I've also gone ahead and drawn a graph for us to track our temperature change across time. So what I've done here is drawn time along the bottom with seconds. And on our Y axis going up here, we're going to mark our temperature in degrees Celsius. So feel free to draw your own graph and follow along as we go. So just before we start, a quick question. What is the freezing temperature of water? If you said zero degrees or below, you'd be correct. At zero degrees or colder, water will freeze into ice. Now at the same time, at zero degrees or higher, ice will melt into water. So there's quite an interesting thing going on at our zero degrees Celsius. So hopefully why we need that will become clear as we go on. So what I'm gonna do first of all is add ice cubes to our cup. So then we're gonna take our starting temperature. So we're gonna pop our thermometer in and very gently uh, give it a little stir to get the ice starting to melt a little bit. So be careful because the thermometer is made of glass and you don't wanna to stir too vigorously. Let's check our temperature. So we are down to about three degrees there. So I'm gonna mark our starting temperature at time of zero seconds at three degrees. So what I'm going to do is start to add our salt and hopefully we'll see a change in the temperature. So I'm going to put four teaspoons of salt onto our ice. Now I can already hear the ice cracking. And again, we're going to give this a very gentle stir around just to help the ice mix in with the salt and the water. And we're going to count to 10 seconds and then we're going to take a temperature reading. So straight away, looking at our temperature, I can see that we've dropped below zero degrees. So actually we've gone straight down to minus five. So I'm gonna mark a time of 10 seconds, minus five degrees Celsius. Perfect, and then we're gonna get stirring again for another 10 seconds. And we're gonna keep doing this, stirring for 10 seconds, taking a measurement, stir for 10 seconds, take a measurement. And once the temperature starts to stabilize, so once the temperature doesn't drop anymore, we will take a look at our graph. That's about 10 seconds. So what have we got? So we've already dropped down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna mark minus 10 at a time of 20 seconds. Perfect. I'm gonna start stirring again. I have a think about what we said earlier, where below zero degrees, water will start to freeze into ice and above zero degrees, ice will melt into water. So at our time of 30 seconds, We've actually dropped below 10 degrees. We are about minus 12. I'll mark minus 12 on here. So it's quite interesting that we've gone well below our freezing point of water. And actually the ice is melting. You can probably see that it's already melted. The water level's a lot higher. Our ice is melting despite the fact the temperature has dropped well below the freezing point of water. So that's about another 10 seconds gone and that temperature is about, about minus 15. So at 50 seconds, I'm gonna mark minus 15. And I'm gonna start stirring again for another 10 seconds. Now after those initial couple of big drops, it's starting to stabilize a little bit. So probably not too many more measurements to go. Yep, we've got minus 15 again at 60 seconds. And I'll give it another stir for 10 seconds. 
and then we'll see what our graph looks like. Now let's take a look for our measurement. Yep, so it's still minus 15, so I think that's stabilized, so we'll stop stirring there. So on our graph, you can see that we had a starting temperature of three degrees, and then it dropped by eight degrees and shot way past our freezing point temperature of zero. And it carried on dropping, so at 20 seconds we're at minus 10, so another five degree drop in temperature. At 40 seconds, we had another two degree drop in temperature to minus 12. And then from 50, 60 and 70 seconds of stirring, we bottomed out at around minus 15. So it stabilized there. But you can see this huge drop happening there. So why is it that despite the temperature dropping to minus 15 for quite a long time, did the ice continue to melt? Because you can see our water level has shot way up. So we started with the water level right down here, more of a puddle, and it's risen up to there. And at the same time, the ice cubes have melted down. So earlier we said that around that zero degree mark, we've got ice melting and we've also got water freezing. So when both of those things happen, at the same time. So that's called an equilibrium. So here we have our water molecules, our H2O molecules, and when they are in a solid ice formation, they are a lot more closely packed together. But when the temperature starts to rise and goes above zero degrees, they will start to become a lot more spread out because they're water, they are liquid. Remember we said that at zero degrees and above, the ice will melt, and at zero degrees and below, water will start to freeze and we have that sort of equilibrium point where both are happening at the same time. When we give something energy, when we give something heat, molecules start to move around a lot more. They start to vibrate. So for example, if we had our ice here and we started to heat our ice up, the molecules will start to vibrate, they get more energy, they will start to spread out. Whereas when things start to cool down, they will start to move around a lot less and they will start to become more fixed in position because it's a lot easier to fix a molecule when it has less energy, less heat, and is so moving around a lot less. What's interesting is that what salt does is it gets in the way of these molecules. It stops the ice from refreezing back into a solid. So even if these start to reform, the salt will get in the way of a lot of the molecules and stop it reattaching to the ice. So what happened in our experiment was the ice was still melting but we weren't having the reverse process, the freezing happening because the salt was getting in the way. So our ice cubes were continually melting but not refreezing. So what the salt actually did is lower the freezing point, the freezing temperature of water. So you needed a much much colder temperature in order to fix these molecules back into ice. So that's why our ice kept melting and didn't refreeze. But why did the temperature drop so low? So then the reason our mixture is getting colder and colder is because to break these bonds apart, to help separate these water molecules from one another, you need to take in energy into your system. And when you're taking in energy, you are sucking in heat from the environment. And that breaks the bonds and separates them so the temperature drops, but there's no refreezing. Now there are loads of ways you can take this experiment further. So you can experiment with the amount of salt you add, the number of ice cubes, the, num the amount of water, and how much you stir the mixture. You could also try experimenting with some other things other than salt. So maybe try sugar, or if you've got some sand, for example, from the beach, try that as well and see if you get the same effect. If you do this experiment or you take it further, we'd love to hear about it. We'd love to see it. So get in touch with us on our social media. But for now, that's all from me. Bye-bye.